What's up guys, it's Sean here. Now, if you've been wanting to learn how to use Google's latest deep learning library, TensorFlow 2.0, but you weren't too big on Python, well, they actually have a JavaScript version as well called tensorflow.js. So in this video, I'm gonna show you the basic essentials of TensorFlow in Node.js, so you can start creating and training your own neural networks in just a few lines of JavaScript code. Now, in case you're absolutely new to TensorFlow, it was basically designed for function approximation problems where we know the outputs that should be produced from a given input, but we don't yet know the internal function parameters that would produce that output. So TensorFlow allows us to model the function's parameters with these things called variables, which TensorFlow can pass to an optimizer algorithm which uses the gradients of these variables to tweak them to get the calculated output closer to the expected output. And in this particular example, it's clear that the true value of m is 1, but scaling this to large functions with many parameters allows us to easily build complex neural networks. So to start, open your favorite code editor, and for me that's Visual Studio Code, and then create a folder for our tutorial. Now to install tensorflow.js, we'll need Node's package manager known as npm, which you can install by searching for Node.js, click on download, and then select the installer for your operating system. Then we'll go to TensorFlow's homepage, Click on the button for JavaScript, then we'll see tutorials, and then click on setup, and finally Node.js setup. And we've installed Node's package manager npm, so we'll copy this line, then open a new terminal, and paste in and run that install command. After that's done, you'll see a Node modules folder, so then we can create a new JavaScript file and import TensorFlow. Now, for learning how to code using any new library, it's a huge lifesaver to learn how to find things in the documentation. So for the tensorflow.js docs, go back to this page and then in the menu, click on API. And this will take you to a single page with all of the documentation. So I'll try my best to introduce you to as much of the documentation as I can, but feel free to pause the video if you want a closer look at things. Now TensorFlow stores things in these constructs called tensors, which is just a generic name for an n-dimensional array, where the number of dimensions is also known as the rank. And in tensorflow.js, a tensor object will only hold the properties of the underlying data, but not the actual data itself. And this is to optimize for the asynchronous nature of JavaScript. But for debugging purposes, if you just wanted to print the data, then a tensor has its own print function. And we can also define functions that use tensors in mathematical operations, like multiplying with the tf.mul function, which will return a new tensor with the result. Now, let's say we wanted to optimize the value of m such that f of 5 actually outputs 5. Then this becomes a minimization problem where we want to minimize the squared difference between f of 5 and 5. So what we're going to do is define a loss function to minimize, which takes in no arguments, but calculates the difference between f of 5 and 5 and returns the squared result. Then we can use one of TensorFlow's optimizers and I'll go with the basic stochastic gradient descent with a learning rate of 0.01. And the actual optimization step occurs when we call the dot minimize function on the optimizer and pass in the loss function to minimize. But in order for TensorFlow to figure out what variables it can change, we need to wrap those in a tf.variable function. Now I'll show you another way to get a tensor's actual values for printing, and that is to call the dot data function, but that is an asynchronous function that returns a JavaScript promise, so if we want to wait for the data, we need to use the data sync version instead. And we see that the value of m has decreased a bit, and the value of f of 5 is closer to 5 than before. So then if we run this a few times, we see that the value of m is gradually optimized towards the true value that makes f of 5 to equal 5. Okay, so now that you've seen the basics of TensorFlow.js, let's see how we can apply that to create a neural network to classify images of handwritten digits from the MNIST dataset. Now, unlike the Python API, TensorFlow.js doesn't include the Keras module or any of its datasets. But that doesn't stop us from trying to search for it ourselves. So let's try typing in Node.js MNIST. And the first hit is a GitHub link to what looks like an API containing the dataset. Now we'll need to do a bit of digging around at first, but looking at the names of these files, main.js is usually a good place to start. So scrolling down, we see a few imports of data and a model, and then a function run, and this looks useful for loading our dataset. 
So let's clone this repository by going to the root and copying the clone path and assuming you've got git run git clone with that path. But if you don't you could just download the zip and unzip it to that project folder. Then we will import the data module at the relative path from the downloaded tfjs examples folder. And now we can copy this and run it to see what it gives us which is a tensor with 60,000 28 by 28 by 1 images and 60,100 encoded labels. But in this tutorial I actually want to show you how to reshape raw data. So we'll go back to just printing this data object after we call load data on it. And it looks like it gives us some size information and a massive array called dataset. So if we actually go to this data.js file and check out the load data function, it tells us that it has the training images and labels followed by the test images and labels. So let's extract those four arrays from the dataset property on the data object and then turn them into tensors that we can print to see their properties. So it looks like our raw images are just flattened rows of 784 pixels. But if we're going to use convolutional layers, we need to reshape this to a 28 by 28 by 1. So we can do that by calling the dot reshape function and passing in the new shape. And here the negative one means that we'll let TensorFlow figure out that value. And for our labels, we need to one hot encode them to be a zero vector of length 10 with a one in the corresponding class index. So we can use the one hot function specifying a depth of 10. But now our labels have this pesky middle dimension and there are a few ways to fix that. But the squeeze function is actually made for removing these dimensions. So we'll call that on dimension one. And now our training data is looking good. So we'll do the same for the test data. And now we can start defining our neural network architecture. So let's rename this to get data and create a new function train. And since get data is an async function, it returns a JavaScript promise, which has a dot then method to call our train function after get data has finished defining the global train and test variables. Now for creating neural network models, tf.sequential lets you create a network through adding layers one by one or by passing in a list of layers to the constructor. So let's use this and pass in an object with a layers property for the list of layers our network is going to have. So to start off our list, let's go down to layers and check out the 2D convolutional layer. But here it only mentions the arguments for a number of filters, which isn't very helpful for creating our own convolutional layer. But then I remembered that the MNIST repository had a model file. So let's check that out for some inspiration on what's needed to complete our convolutional layer. Let's also add some max pooling, which has a pool size and a stride property, taking in a height and width of the pooling window. Then we'll flatten the output with a flatten layer. And then finally, we'll pass that output to a dense layer to output 10 probabilities using the softmax activation function. Now, if you're not too familiar with how convolutional layers work, I have a video for that in the description. And so with our network architecture defined, we can then compile the model by passing in an object that specifies the optimizer, the loss function, and also the metrics, which is typically just accuracy. Now for the optimizer, we can just select any one of these, but the atom optimizer is a good one to use in general cases. And for our loss function, we can use the log loss since we're comparing probabilities to one hot labels. And then the actual training of our model happens in model.fit on the X and Y training data, but we can also give it an object for some extra arguments like number of epochs and the batch size. But since this returns a promise, we need to await it. I'll also show you how to save the weights of the model. So we'll go to tutorials and guides, then click on guides and then on save and load models. Now there's different protocols for saving the model depending on whether the JavaScript is running in the browser or in Node.js. And since we're using Node.js, we'll want to click on this link. So we'll use this to await the call to model.save, where the path must start with file colon slash slash and then a local folder name to save the model in. And finally, we're ready to train this. So we'll just run that. And after it's done, we should see a model folder appear over here with our model.json, which shows the network's architecture and also the saved weights.bin. Okay, so we've trained the model, but to really see how well it generalizes to unseen data, we need to evaluate it on the test dataset. So let's create another function for evaluation, which we will call instead of train for now. Now to load a model, if we just scroll down a bit, we can find the Node.js protocol for loading a model. 
but this needs to point to the model.json file in our saved folder. This will create the same model architecture from this line, but with the saved weights loaded in. And going back to the docs, there is actually a summary function which will print out the architecture to help us verify it's the same model. Then we'll just compile it as before and then call the evaluate function with the test images and labels. And this will return an array with a final value for the loss and the accuracy. Now for printing these values out, since we're in an async function, we can actually await the asynchronous data function to get the values in the same way that the data sync function did. And that's it for the code. So let's go full screen, crank up the epochs and see the entire training process in action. So that's how you can train a complete neural network in less than 40 lines of JavaScript. I'll also link the source code from the video in the description below so that you can easily adapt it for other datasets. And with these tutorials, I'm hoping that I can make it as easy as possible for anyone to get started with deep learning in TensorFlow using their preferred coding language. So if you did find it helpful, it would be amazing if you could share it with anyone you think could benefit from it. But anyways, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, keep learning like a machine. Bye.